I've lived in Germany for seven years, three years in Dusseldorf, four years in Berlin, and there are certain things that Germans just will never understand about the United States and US culture. Some of them are obvious, others not so much. So buckle up for 11 things Germans don't understand about Americans. But before we begin, just a quick disclaimer. This is based entirely on anecdotal evidence, just my experience. So before you get all fired up into the comments, well, well actually, that, that, that's not my experience, so it must not be true. Just, just tone it down a notch. In the grand scheme of things, this is just a dumb YouTube video on a melting planet floating in an endless void. Anywho, don't forget to like and subscribe if this video brings you just a modicum of joy. I know, setting the bar high. All right, numbers one, two, and three, healthcare, guns, and Trump. I'm lumping these three together because they're obvious, people spend so much time and energy talking about them, and frankly, nobody really understands it from Portugal all the way to Estonia, let alone Germans themselves. Hell, I don't even understand it. So rather than beating a dead horse, I'm gonna move right on to number four. Superficiality. This is one that as an American, you kind of hear about early on when you're asking Germans or colleagues or whatever, you know, how are you doing? How was your weekend? Typically in German culture, to ask somebody how they're doing means you like want to sit down and really get at it and really unload your feelings and you know, how are you really doing? And in the US, that's generally not what we mean. When you say how you're doing, it's kind of like a little bit of a script. How you doing? I'm fine, you fine, yeah, cool, let's, let's move on. But I, I get a little defensive about this one because I think the German assumption is that Americans don't actually care. But, you know, if I say, how are you doing? And the response back isn't fine. They say, well, actually X, Y, and Z are going terribly wrong. I have a heart, I think. Yeah, I have a heart. If somebody tells me that they're not doing well, I will stop my day and listen and try to empathize. And I care, I'm, I'm a human being. And I believe most Americans are that if you tell somebody that they're, you're not doing well, they'll listen. So like I said, I get a little defensive about this one because I don't really think Americans are superficial. I do think when we're asking how you're doing, we care. But my theory is really that people, especially in Germany, are so overexposed to the US, our news, our television, our movies, that there's only one kind of representation of Americans, or there's just not a whole lot of different takes on Americans, and we can seem a bit shallow, a bit superficial. Since that representation is bombarding them, I mean, of course that's what they're gonna think about us. But, and as a lot of the Germans who have had the opportunity to travel to the US have told me, they love Americans, and for the most part, we're nice, we're not superficial, we care about how you're doing, and how things are going in your life. So what I think a lot of it has to do with is the fact that our news is basically reality television for Germany and probably the entire continent of Europe. I mean, people just eat up our news to the point where Germans will often know more about what's happening in the United States politically than what's even happening in their own backyard. There's that, and then of course, our television shows and movies that they're watching the same things. And so that's basically the representation they're getting of the US. Everybody lives in New York because that's where every sitcom is set in. Or, you know, if we're feeling a little crazy, it's set in LA or Chicago. Number five, tipping culture. This is something Germans and I think Europeans across the board just really don't get about the US. And it's not something that I like. I get defensive about the reactions some people have to tipping culture. I think there's this kind of growing sentiment that I'm gonna travel to the US and I'm not going to tip because the tipping system is not fair. It's an injustice committed upon the working class, people working in hospitality, this kind of thing. And, and to the point where, again, anecdotally, you see things like people, like waiters in the US taking pictures of their bills saying, you know, no tip or I'm not tipping or people making comments about, you know, we don't tip in Europe, I'm not gonna tip here. Well, there are two things about that. First of all, you actually do tip in Europe. In Germany, it's quite common to add 10% to a bill, especially like a dinner bill. If it's a group of like eight or larger, often they'll say something on the menu like groups eight or larger, a tip is going to be included into this. Um, for smaller transactions, like maybe a coffee or a beer, you usually would just round up. So it's not that tipping doesn't happen here, of course, and I can already hear people wanting to get into the comments say, well, it's gotten out of control in the US. Yes, it has gotten out of control. And, you know, 20% used to be kind of the norm. And now when you get, 
you're checking out with a little device or whatever, you get the suggested tip and supposedly it's gone up as high as 30 or 35%. I am not defending tipping culture in and of itself. What I get frustrated with is when people act like they, just because they don't like it, they shouldn't have to do it while in the US. And to me, you're not really gonna change anything. It's not like the owners of the restaurants are gonna go, oh wow, uh, Hans and Franz just came in and, and, and they didn't leave a tip. I'm going to change my ways and, and offer a better salary. No, that's not what's gonna happen. You're just gonna stiff the waiter. And if you're really that concerned about them and you think that the system is unfair, just tip the waiter. And if tipping somebody at a restaurant is really going to make or break your trip to the US, as in you can't afford it if you have to start offering a 20% tip on meals, then maybe you shouldn't be flying across an ocean to travel to the US. Maybe just travel someplace closer to home or if tipping culture offends you so greatly, go someplace where that's just not a thing. But if you're gonna go all the way to the US and you know that this is a thing, you know, don't stiff the waiter. Number six, car culture. It feels a little weird to say that Germans don't understand American car culture, especially because so many famous car brands are manufactured here in Germany and the American highway system was basically taken from Germany with the Autobahns. Like that was a great influence for bringing it to the United States. Car culture to me in the US is different because cars for many people in the US are essentially the only way that you get around. Like you can live in places where it is virtually impossible for you to reach like a grocery store without a car. Although people have cars here, of course, and some people are, are obsessed with their cars and it's still like a status symbol. It's a totally normal or, or viable option to just kind of opt out of having a car and not wanting to have a car, especially if you live in a city like Berlin, but even smaller cities like, you know, in the US, of course, you've got New York, Chicago, DC, places like that where it, you might not get strange looks if you don't have a car. People won't constantly ask you, well, how did you get here? As happened to me all the damn time in Cleveland. You can live in smaller cities in Germany and not have a car and that's totally fine and you can get around easily. And plus in the US, I think there is a bigger obsession about cars. I watched the Browns game this past weekend, you know, between every single play, there's another freaking car commercial and not even just a car commercial, like it's almost a car commercial that's just been injected with testosterone. It's like Ford. I don't know. I don't know enough car brands to really make that work. But you get what I'm saying. It's always these massive vehicles that are just running across all sorts of terrain that I, the average person will never have to do. So the car culture is definitely different in the U.S. than it is in Germany. It's not such an obsession, I don't think. And also just the way you interact with cars. Like here as a pedestrian, if you walk on the crosswalk, I would say nine times out of 10, the car will stop and slow down like pretty far away from the crosswalk. In the US, I have very visceral memories of going onto the crosswalk and cars just speeding through. The, the assumption is that you will yield to the car, even though that's not what the law is, even though there might be a giant sign in the middle of the road that says stop as I can think of on West 25th in Cleveland place I almost been nailed countless times and here generally the expectation is that the car will stop and I can kind of see this divide because I've, I've noticed when some Americans will come and visit in Germany you can see how skittish they are sometimes to cross the street because they just assume well the car's got to go the car's got to go so I do think there's a little bit of adjustment for Americans who come here as a pedestrian, getting used to how the car culture is just different than it is in the US. Number seven, vacations, or rather the lack thereof. I think Germans are generally aware of the fact that Americans just generally don't get good vacation packages, or the fact that some Americans strangely pride themselves on the fact that, oh, I haven't taken a day off in five years or something like that. In Germany, that's that would be strange. and. I, I like this about Germany, hence still living here. This, the relationship to the idea that, you know, you need time off, you need to go on vacation. In the US, you're lucky if you have any vacation because you might have to use your vacation for sick days. Or if you have kids, you might have to take your own holiday off to take care of sick kids. And then you get sick because the kid's sick. And then it's just kind of a 
never-ending cycle, and then suddenly you don't have any holiday, and the best escape you can get is just like a little weekend getaway to the same place you've gone for years and years and years, and I feel bad about that. Also in Germany, it's illegal not to offer somebody a certain amount of vacation days. In Berlin, it's 28 days, and there's really nothing your employer can do to stop you from taking them. Whereas in the US, there's, you know, that little bit of pressure to work harder and, you know, not go on holiday, show that you're the one who's working harder so that you can get the promotion and so on and so forth. Which brings me to my next point, work-life balance. Now this kind of ties into vacations, of course. In Germany, people work and the kind of stereotype is that I will focus and work during these hours of the day and then I shut off from work and I go do something else. In the US, the stereotype is more, we've all seen the different kinds of memes of Germans, or, or this is probably more European wide, you know, August comes around or maybe even July. And you know, the, the emails usually, like if you send somebody an email, the bounce back is usually, um, thanks for your email. I'm on holiday for the next three weeks. Your message will not be read or forwarded. Please try again later or something blunt like that. Whereas the American equivalent would be like, you get it, you write an email and the bounce back is, hi, I'm in emergency surgery right now. I should be awake in about an hour and I'll get right back to you or something ridiculous like that. It's just a different mindset. And I'd actually be interested to know if this is changing a little bit, because I can see Germany getting a little worse or a little bit more like the American mindset. I can recall one boss who was getting a little miffed because people were leaving at the end of the day and not staying late. And he kind of grumbled to somebody else saying like, well, well why, are, why are people going home so early? And, and somebody else saying, well, it's the end of the day and this is people's job. It's not like their life. And this was at a startup. So I think this is this kind of overwork culture is kind of seeping into Germany's growing tech and startup scene where people are putting in those extra hours like an American would because it's their baby. So I, I kind of get it to the extent like we're, if this is your passion project, your baby, you're going to do this outside of work hours. Like I, when I make these videos, I do it outside of work hours because this is something I'm passionate about. That overwork culture, I do see kind of seeping into Germany a little bit, but still for the most part, people are taking their holiday, they're, they're, they're turning off for, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks at a time. But again, you do sometimes see people, you know, writing now because we have all these tools to constantly keep us working, like like Slack and Teams and email. So you do occasionally see people popping in late at night and you're kind of the, the American in me who's gotten used to this German style and, and it's one of the reasons I love living here. It's kind of like, mm, can, can we stop that so that this doesn't become a thing that's normalized? So it is happening here, but in the US it's just a whole nother ball game of of constantly working. I also think it has a little bit to do with the difference in employment law. In Germany, generally speaking, when you start a new job, you're on probezeit or basically a probation period for about six months where either side can kind of say we're parting ways and, and that's that. And once you get past that, it's very difficult to terminate someone. I'm sure a lot of American employers would be terrified by that sentiment, the idea that you can't get rid of somebody that you want to get rid of. But it seems to be working for the most part in Germany and you know, unemployment is always quite low. Whereas in the US, I can remember basically not always being terrified, but you, there's always this unsettling feeling that, you know, they could always just get rid of me for whatever reason at any point in time for the most part. And so I do feel like you kind of just never, at least for me, I never really felt like I got comfortable because, you know, if your manager or boss or the head honcho is in a bad mood, that kind of rub off on you and think like, oh, is it me? And some people maybe like this because then their employees perhaps, you know, like, oh, and that's kind of drives this overwork culture. They, they're terrified about keeping their job. Things are just more relaxed here. So I like that. And so I think there's still that difference in work culture that Germans just don't quite understand about Americans. Number nine, nudity, or again, lack thereof. In the US, you just don't get naked. You don't do it unless you're taking a shower and the lights are off and there's no mirrors in sight. Obviously I'm exaggerating, but if you think about it, it's no surprise we're afraid of our naked bodies because if you look at all the media, they're basically telling us to hate our bodies unless we're super jacked like a superhero or we're as thin as a model. 
That said, I came to Germany generally indifferent about nudity. I wasn't ashamed of my naked body and like really wanting to cover up and not be part of that, but I also wasn't super excited about it. I didn't really care too much. But the stereotype about Americans being, you know, afraid of nudity or a bit prude is definitely prevalent in German society, I think, because people, you know, people make jokes about it like, oh, American, you won't want to go to the sauna because you have to go naked and whatever, which feels like a kind of weird put down. Like, oh yeah, sick burn, Hans. I don't want to get naked around a bunch of strangers. Yeah, you got me. Over time, though, I've reached a point where I just don't give a shit. Be naked. Screw OnlyFans. Let's do Only Life and be naked as much as you want. Truth be told, though, I do think this stereotype about Germans embracing nudity is a bit overblown. There's the FKK Kultur, the Freie Kopa Kultur, basically like East German style nudist camping grounds that that's a thing but it's not like we're running around germany and berlin and other parts of the country naked all the time really the only time nudity comes up is when you're going to like a sauna or a spa kind of thing but even in germany the first time i went to a spa i did go into what they call the textile section which is when you just wear like a bathing suit or trunks and that was fine and there was a naked section but i was with my in-laws so i went in the textile one i think you could understand and i have since done the naked sauna experience i wouldn't say under duress it just wasn't something that i looked to do because i don't particularly care about sauna but i was in sweden and i was with a satmi family up north and the patriarch of the family basically said okay we have eaten dinner and now we are going to the sauna you're coming with so of course i was gonna go and this was one hell of a way to dive into sauna because it was a very tiny room literally cheek to cheek but this was only men so it was not co-ed but cheek to cheek and uh sweating qu quite a bit there so that was an experience so then by the time that i actually did do sauna a co-ed one actually the other day that was no big deal because it was not a surprise i knew i was going to do it and and it's fine it was actually kind of cool to be in there you know men and women and it not to be a big deal and so i kind of get the german mindset now and think it's not not that this comes up a lot in the us but for those where it's still kind of an uncomfortable topic again i get it because of the you know media diets and everything telling you that your body's gross you, you shouldn't like it I get why people feel like have maybe this not great relationship with doing it, but I think it is kind of nice that in Germany that you can go someplace, be butt ass naked, and it's not a big deal. Number 10, patriotism. Do I really need to explain why this isn't a thing in Germany? Like the whole flag waving thing you see in the US during Memorial Day weekend? There's really not an equivalent to that here. It's only recently, relatively recently, I think, been considered acceptable to be waving like German flags at a soccer game because for the most part unfortunately or for better or worse I don't really know if you see a group of people waving German flags they're probably going to have some other flags that are let's say not so welcoming of others and you're not going to want to be hanging around that group so for the most part Flag waving just isn't a thing, except for pride. Pride flags, those are cool. If you see those going, go hang out with that group. They're probably fun. But for the most part, patriotism just isn't a thing. So for Germans, seeing all the like flag waving coming out of the US can seem weird to them sometimes. And considering their history and where that kind of patriotism can get you, I, I completely understand why that would strike them as a little ooh, uncomfortable. Last but not least, number 11, why we are here. Now this one is unique to Americans who actually live in Germany and something that Germans don't understand about those specific Americans, talking about this guy, a lot of them don't understand why we're here. They'll often ask like, ba they'll basically put it like that, like, so why are you here? Why Germany? And I give them the story that I've explained in other videos that I wasn't actually picking Germany. It wasn't looking for Germany. It just kind of happened that way as I was looking to move to Europe. But I think some of the confusion has to do with the fact that the U.S. is probably the best at marketing itself in the entire world. 
It is a rite of passage for any serious national politician to call the U.S. the best country in the world. There's like a million different U.S. sitcoms. 99% of them are set in New York City and there's always some guy who's talking on and on and on about how New York is the greatest city in the world. And you hear this over and over again and some people I think start to believe that, well, yep, the greatest city in the world is New York and it's in the greatest country in the world. Of course, the idea that, you know, the greatest country in the world, it's a ridiculous concept. What's the greatest country in the world is going to differ vastly from person to person. But it's funny to me how this confusion can manifest in day to day life. I'm thinking about one time when we were living in Dusseldorf, Melanie got pulled over on, for, for riding her bike on the sidewalk. And it, 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 it's obvious, you know, that we're not from Germany. We have accent when we speak German and the cop finds out that she's from the US and basically his response was but why are you living in Germany when there's Santa Fe like literally said Santa Fe as if well if you have the freedom to move to Germany surely you would pick Santa Fe before anywhere else Santa Fe New Mexico I stayed one night in Santa Fe I'm sure it's a lovely place I know bupkis about it but that actually ties specifically to a general German general German a general German fascination with the American Southwest for a whole slew of reasons that would be an entirely different video, so I won't go down that road. And then the other response is, well, why don't you live in New York City? Because again, you hear all the time that New York City is the greatest city on earth. Why wouldn't you just live there? And this gets back to what I was talking about before about how Germans, Europeans, what have you, consume so much media out of the US, including television shows, that they see life in New York and they think how glamorous it is. For some people, I'm sure it's very glamorous, but I know many people who have lived in New York and talked about how difficult it was, how expensive it is. So you do come across that where Germans are sometimes confused as to why an American would live here over whatever fantasy they have of life in the US. Then again, you do also meet a lot of people who totally understand why an American would wanna live here instead of in the US. And that's all I got for you in this one. If you want to learn more about why I think Germany truly is the best place to move to in Europe, then go ahead and watch that video. Otherwise, if you want to see some of my travels around the country, then go ahead and check out that playlist. Juicy Goosey!